Hello everyone, so I've simplified my octave fuzz circuit. So all these resistors now are 10k, including the current limiter for the LED, and it still illuminates. I tried even with 20k just to make sure that it wasn't on the edge of operating. And now it still, it still shines. I tried it with orange LEDs, red LEDs, yellow LEDs. This is a yellow LED. And these are the 1N60P Schottky diodes that I had in my earlier videos. I'm planning on actually using BAT54s, but they aren't arriving till Saturday, so... Let's give this a quick sonic demonstration. I don't have a bypass foot pedal hooked up to this yet, but... to octave fuzz. As with the standard fuzz, I have this on series, but some pretty neat effects. Right now I'm having it on standard fuzz. Got some neat ring mod kind of effects. Like standard fuzz. So here we have a little sonic demonstration. I'm going to start at the um, standard fuzz. Switch to uh, parallel pickups.
Okay, let's go. So it's gonna show down the lower registers, but you get some. If I switch over to the, was the should I say the darkest setting on my guitar? tricky to see this but we have right here our input and this would normally go through your little bypass circuit but of course in this case I'm just documented what's on my breadboard so it goes through a 0.1 microfarad capacitor and then there's a 10k resistor to our reference voltage VR which is um, between positive 9 volts and negative 9 volts well technically positive 9 volts and ground because the negative 9 volts is used as a signal ground so this is sort of like a single ended circuit that's why there's this one microfarad and so <clears throat> here's our 1 and 60 P's on the last variant I had these uh, 4000 ones these right here they have a very high um, what you call it uh, forward voltage drop so I used some of these little 1 in 60p shot key diodes and the advantage of this is that the it clips much sooner and the signal lay, the signal strength is much closer to that of the original guitar signal so you don't need very much attenuation here and so right here we have our so it's, I found out this is called a soft clipper and in a way it also kind of controls the gain the gain is really high but this is what's called a soft clipper, so the clipping has a soft knee on it. So after the after UNA, this, this is all the same chip, it's a one chip deal, but there are four op amps. It goes to through a 10K resistor and also goes off to the mixer, so you, and this has to be actually pretty high, so I put greater than or equal to 200K right here. Although what I have on the board I just showed is a one mega ohm, and I would recommend that now so we've got this 10k resistor this little this little section right here is just an absolute value circuit very interesting one very simple one well actually you include this buffer as well buffer as needed so these these have to be the same resistance so the, these are both 10k and because uh, that's my that's been my choice and it's worked well and we have another 1 in 60p shot key diode. This this is pretty much full bridge rectifies the signal. So as I said, it takes the absolute value and goes into this buffer. That's just the voltage follower. And this is offset, of course, by uh, VR, which if this was perfectly 9 volts, then it would be 4.5 volts would be our reference voltage. And it goes through our little mixer into an output buffer, and this is really helpful because that then there's no dip in volume depending on how, what the impedance of your amplifier or audio interface or whatever you're outputting to 
so it, the impedance here stays nice and high so it kind of shields this whole area from any differences in impedance on the output and of course right here we have our power supply section this is a 9 volt center negative it's common for uh, guitar pedals and you've got a one microfarad decoupling capacitor now I'm planning on using multi-layer ceramic like I have on this one for decoupling uh, that's why I didn't note polarity and I did note polarity here but it's also going to be a multi-layer ceramic as is this one the not point one microfarad capacitor my voice is getting hoarse so you've got a 4001 this just protects it against negative polarity because a lot of uh, power supplies are positive uh, positive uh, center instead of negative center but uh, most power supplies if not all are center negative for uh, mine's just this uh, one spot guitar pedal power supply and of course you've got this resistor divider generating our reference voltage so these are both 10k these were originally 1k on like, this circuit right here these were 1k but 10k also seems to work and this had like a uh, sort of like a tremolo effect too that's why you see two chips and extra knobs but I'm getting it down to just one knob which is really cool I'm planning on selling them as a kit the little boards I, I, I'm hoping are the size of an SD card as you can see of course like a foot switch is like this of course I wouldn't have the foot switch going into the PCB it's pretty simple to wire up a true bypass by hand and that would save the expense of having a separate PCB because it has to sit at a different level from the potentiometer. So you would take, so the potentiometer would be like at the top here and um, you'd have all your connections for the input of the board, the output of the board. Of course, where it would go to the jacks, it would go to the bypass switch instead and be kind of a point to point kind of thing for for that so those wouldn't run through the board because I want to keep the board nice and compact and of course the type of LM324 I'm using would be a little uh, SOIC like this one and of course the resistors and capacitors all 0603 so that'd be a little SMD kit and what you could do is you could wire it up as a guitar pedal with the foot switch. You could use it, you could put a couple in the same, you could put a couple different ones in the same enclosure, kind of mix and match if you wanted to. But it'd be a really interesting little uh, micro pedal. Of course, I wouldn't be putting a pin header right here, but it'd have the same footprint as if uh, you would. So it's got the 2.54 millimeter pitch of the holes. Although I might have a few here and then a gap and then one for the power supply because of course for what for the board if of course we count the LED you've got the input to the board output to the board common to the board which is actually the negative supply so that can just that's that's just uh, two or three if you want to put an extra link there and then also you would have it switching the negative of the Actually, why would you want to put the common of the supply there if you're not? Because I would put the 11 meg, not the 11 meg, I'm the 10 meg ohm resistor on the on the main board itself. It'd be a lot simpler. Uh, that just prevents popping in the bypass circuit. It goes from uh, that to ground. Goes from the input to ground, so the input jack to ground, so it doesn't pop when you hit the switch. Because when you're playing and then you hit the switch, there, when the mo when the di switch is disconnected, is enough time for it to build up a little bit of a charge, and it makes a snap sound. So, I'd have that the board input board output common and of course uh, well, yeah I do I do actually do the negative and then 
have it so it sw of course switches the negative side of the LED. That would be that would be smart. So that would be one, two. That'd be that'd be four pins going off the board to the bypass switch. And of course, you've got common and the two signal wires, the input and the output jack, going to the bypass switch. So you'd have a really compact little PCB here. I think it would be really neat. Let me know if you're interested in, in kits of that. I mean, it's still, it's still a work in progress in terms of the design, but it's the general form factor I'm hoping for. Well, if you like this video, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and definitely don't forget to hit that bell. Until next time, thanks for watching.